And I will now turn uh, the uh, uh, to the speaker, uh, John uh, Jan Menke Holtman, who is speaking to us from the Netherlands, from Holland. Uh, and we are looking forward to hearing your wise contributions. Yeah, thank you, Sigurd. Distinguished viewers of this webinar, good morning or afternoon, depending where you are, of course, in the world. Tatja Hal. My name is Jan Menke Hopma, and I'm speaking from the Netherlands. This webinar about Belt and Road is very re relevant to the Netherlands, since the Netherlands is the second largest European trade partner of China. The value of goods imported from China has more than doubled since 2015, from 29 billion euro to 64 billion in 2022. In my speech, I will talk about the opportunities of the Belt and Road Initiative for the Netherlands, but also go deeper into the challenges and recommendations so that the Netherlands and Europe can also benefit from the BRI. And for the Netherlands, being one of the most innovative countries in the world, innovation is a very important element in the cooperation with China. In the second part of my speech, I will therefore focus on how European companies, universities and research institutes can connect with the Chinese innovation ecosystem via the Yangtze River Delta around Shanghai. But first, I would like to introduce myself and my company, Innovation Bridge, a bit further to you. With a consultancy and banking, banking career as background, I went to China in 2017, where I became advisor for local Chinese government on attracting foreign investments to their city. In the following years, including during the pandemic, I expanded my network both in China and Europe a lot, which led to setting up my own company in the Netherlands. I called it Innovation Bridge because my mission is to be the bridge between Europe and China for innovation and technology. And my company helps European technology projects and companies to enter the Chinese market, making use of our network in China among local government, science parks, companies, and investors. But as a two-way bridge, it also helps Chinese companies to enter the European market. So my company also has business partners in several European countries and in different regions of China. And since this year, I'm also appointed as the European advisor for a large Chinese research institute in Jiangsu, about which I will tell you a bit more later. First, I want to talk about the opportunities for the Netherlands related with the BRI. First, infrastructure investment. As a global hub for trade and logistics, the Netherlands can benefit from increased investment in infrastructure projects under the BRI. Dutch expertise in port development, logistics management, and maritime engineering position the country as a valuable partner for China in enhancing connectivity along the Maritime Silk Road. Secondly, the trade expansion, the BRI, presents also an opportunity for Dutch business to expand their presence in fast-growing markets along the Belt and Road routes. With a strategic location and advanced logistics network, the port of Rotterdam serves as an ideal gateway for Chinese goods entering Europe, facilitating trade flows and promoting economic cooperation between the two countries. And third, green development. With its focus on sustainable development and green finance, the Netherlands can play a key role in promoting environmentally friendly projects under the BRI. Dutch expertise in renewable energy, water management and sustainable infrastructure aligns with China's commitment to green growth, offering opportunities for collaboration in areas such as renewable energy generation, waste management and environmental protection. And fourth, financial services. The Netherlands' well-established financial sector and expertise in banking, insurance, and investment management makes it also an attractive destination for Chinese companies seeking financing and investing investment opportunities along the Belt and Road routes. 
Dutch financial institutions can provide valuable support in project financing, risk management, and capital allocation, facilitating the implementation of the BRI projects. But there are also challenges. Um, first, the geopolitical. The global ge geopolitics clearly have a major influence on Sino-Dutch uh, relations. The Netherlands, like other European states, is affected by the competition and ongoing trade and technology uh, war between uh, US and China. And the Netherlands also must navigate these geopolitical considerations carefully, balancing its economic interests with broader strategic concerns and ensuring that its engagement with the BRI is transparent, inclusive, and in line with international norms and standards. Further, the Netherlands must also work collaboratively with its European partners and international institutions to promote transparency, accountability, and responsible lending pro practices within the framework of BRI, safeguarding the long-term interest of the stakeholders involved. Third, the regulatory environment, the differences in regulatory frameworks, legal systems, and business practices between China and Netherlands can present challenges for Dutch companies operating in BRI countries. The Netherlands must also ensure that its companies are equipped with necessary knowledge, resources, and support to navigate the complex regulatory environments and mitigate risks associated with cross-border business operations. Of course, the sustainable the environmental and social impact, while the BRI offers opportunities for infrastructure development and economic growth, there are also concerns about its potential environment and social impact. The Netherlands advocates also for sustainable and responsible development practices within the BRI framework. So environmental conservation, social inclusion, and respect for uh, human rights. But uh, it leads also to uh, recommendations uh, how to uh, further strengthen the BRI uh, and the Netherlands uh, cooperation. Um, the Netherlands also should work uh, closely together with its EU partners to develop a unified approach towards the BRI, aligning strategies, priorities, and policies to promote transparency, sustainability, and exclus inclusivity in BRI projects. Also promote sustainable development. Um, the Netherlands advocates also sustainable development practices within the BRI framework, emphasizing environmental conservation, social inclusion, and respect for human rights, and Dutch expertise in sustainable infrastructure, renewable energy, and water management can, can contribute to the development of environmentally friendly BRI projects. A fourth, a third, the facilitate technology transfer and innovation. The, also, the Netherlands should leverage its innovation ecosystem and technology capabilities to facilitate technology transfer and innovation uh, collaboration with Chinese partners. Joint research and development projects, technology parks, and innovation hubs can foster closer ties between Dutch and Chinese companies, driving innovation and economic growth. And also cooperation between companies from the Netherlands, Europe, and China could help to bring the BRI further to practice and to let the Dutch and European companies also benefit from the advantages it offers. In conclusion, the China Belt and Road Initiative presents both opportunities and challenges for the Netherlands, requiring a strategic and proactive approach to maximize benefits and mitigate risks. By leveraging its strength in infrastructure development, trade facilitation, innovation, and sustainability, the Netherlands can play in a constructive role in shaping the future of the BRI and promoting economic cooperation between China and Europe. And since my company, since my company is also the advisor for Nice uh, G3, I would like to um, take this opportunity also to uh, explain to you how European companies and institutes can benefit from connecting with the Chinese innovation ecosystem, and this uh, in the Yangtze River Delta around Shanghai, because the Yangtze River Delta is one of the most globally connected economically developed and innovative regions uh, in China. It covers Shanghai and surrounding provinces Jiangsu, Zhejiang, and Anhui. In this area alone, 24% of the GDP is earned, and around 30% of all R&D spending in China is done over there. With 40% of the national total, it also has the largest foreign direct investment 
recipient in China. The manufacturing output of this region is 8% of the global uh, output. And then I go to the National uh, Level Innovation Platform. This is the National Innovation Center par excellence. It's called NICE. It's a national level technology innovation center, which the operating entities being the Shanghai Yangtze Delta Innovation Institute and Jiangsu Industrial Technology Research Institute. Its objective is to realize the transformation from science to technology with the core mission of promoting key technology research in important fields. It promotes transfer, transformation and industrialization of scientific and technological achievements in collaboration with industries, universities, and research institutes. And it supplies technologies and commercialization services for industrial development of the Yangtze River Delta uh, region of China. So what does it mean in the practice? It, it has like 92 uh, R&D uh, platforms, 317 industrial uh, partnerships for uh, R&D, also strategic partners uh, in universities all over the world. And uh, it, ex it employs more than 15,000 uh, researchers for applied uh, research. So it works like a two-way bridge in functions uh, like between the industry and uh, academia, uh, and also between the global innovation community and the uh, Yangtze Delta. And how can uh, European companies and institute work together with uh, NICE, with G3. Uh, for the universities, uh, it will it can support um, partner universities and institutes to carry out R&D, training and technology uh, transfer projects. And um, sorry. And also for multinational companies, it can also uh, provide uh, R&D uh, uh, R&D cooperation um, uh, with, uh, with G3. For startups, um, it can also receive funding for feasibility in studies, for feasibility studies in China, uh, how to enter the Chinese market, to apply their technology in, in China. Uh, they can also uh, receive an office for one year uh, to build a network there, uh, find a partner, uh, also have R&D services. And when the study is also proven that is a successful uh, feasibility in the Chinese market, they can also further receive um, further funds uh, from NICE G3 for uh, R&D in China and commercialization of their company. But I can tell, of course, much more about this, um, but um, the, the time of this uh, webinar is a bit too, too, too short for that. So for anyone who likes to know more about cooperation opportunities uh, and the funding possibilities, with uh, NICE G3, uh, they can also contact me directly. Here's my contact information. Uh, and my company is also open for uh, partnerships uh, in Europe and the Asian BRI uh, countries for consultancy and investments. So let's build more bridges together and innovation along the BRI route. Thank you very much. <laughs>